And again, look at Amazon. First close over 3,300. You have all the way room to 3,440, even 3,500. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. So, uh, very unique day today. And if you watched um, the weekend video, uh, you heard me talk about something very, very specific. Uh, number one, for weeks and weeks and weeks, we've been talking about, hey, believe me, the last thing you wanna do is buy overextended stocks because the last the last group, right, that survives a sell-off are the dead stocks. The stocks haven't done anything. And the first group that usually gets you know pretty beat up when the musical chairs stops is the stocks that had really aggressive runs. Now, again, they are the byproducts of success for 2020. And the one thing, the, the last thing you want to do is over and over again, especially in a euphoric market, is continue to chase prices higher and higher and higher. Because again, ultimately musical chairs and gravity uh, does come into play. But the, the most important part of kind of last night's video was to say, look, you, you, the market is eventually going to catch you. Okay, Th that goes without saying. It's just a matter of when. And if you look at the scoreboard today, you can't really tell. In other words, if you weren't an active participant today in the market, you couldn't really tell how the market played out. But it, it played out very, very aggressively. And anything that had a really big run in 2020, they got murdered. Okay, again, the indexes don't need to be down a thousand points for your stocks, the high flyers, to get murdered. And we'll talk about the pivots in a second. And the second thing that we saw today, number one, the evidence of stocks, high flyers getting killed. We saw that, check. The second thing we saw, stocks that were in beta for weeks and weeks and months and months that didn't do anything, okay? Uh, the Facebooks of the world, the Netflix of the world, the Amazons of the world, they didn't do anything for a while. And we started talking about over the weekend update that again, I thought towards the end of uh, the fourth quarter, possibly in the first quarter, possibly, again, this is everything's always on the table that money flow was going to start going into beta names. Again, the technology names that hedge funds love to own throughout the year to show performance to their, to the, to their shareholders. And we kind of got both of that today. We had the rug pull today and the really big high flyers. We got very aggressive money flow, uh, especially in Amazon. And the one thing that I had today on the Twitter feed and in, in the nightly webinar, uh, excuse me, in, in the webinar today, this was the first time today I actually put in short pivots, okay? Just because, again, when I was doing my due diligence over the weekend, we saw so many stocks that had big runs, they're just ready to about to come over, and they were just really going sideways, didn't participate. And we knew if they were going to start taking down bottom channels, you're going to get a rug pull. And that all happened, which, which tomorrow sets up a very interesting day. If you look at the names that got really hammered today, and again, we'll, we'll talk about the individual pivots in a second. Again, these are names that had really big moves. So TTD, right, got destroyed. Uh, what else? We, I mean, just shop, right? Shop got destroyed. Uh, snow, caught, you know, and they caught a nice little pivot in, in snow, got destroyed. ZM that we talked about, right, got destroyed. Uh, BYND got destroyed. You, you can see the theme here. And, the, and again, take the other side of that equation, stocks that absolutely did nothing for the, for the most part of the last two, three months, that's where the money flow came in, on Amazon, and on Facebook, and on Netflix. And tomorrow, it's setting up a very, very interesting day that you usually don't see a lot, okay? It's basically, let's see if the mega cap beta names can live with prosperity and start confirming today's channels, and go higher, okay? And basically bullish on beta and bearish on everything else that had a run up, right? So you're looking at something that's very, very unique for tomorrow's session, and it really brings up the point for tomorrow, whatever side of the market that you are comfortable trading at, tomorrow is a unique day that you actually have mega value on both sides of the market. And the most ironic part was when we started talking about today's day and we talked about uh, the, the, you know, in the, in the morning strategy and the webinar, I didn't understand, I didn't think we were gonna have a lot of value today 
And we actually had a lot of value. And for all you guys, so again, just a quick little announcement for all you guys uh, who are thinking about, again, if, if pivots are right for you, um, if you go into the description, I think Kyler uh, will put it in here. There is a, a significant discount for a, a trial for the first uh, week of the year. And I think we're starting it again tomorrow. Really, just again, just to see, kick the tires and see if pivots are for you. Again, are pivots for everybody? Absolutely not. Uh, but again, if you do trade beta uh, and you do, or even if you don't trade beta, again, just for the process and you're looking to kind of cement your foundation at some point, again, for all you guys have been watching this broadcast for a while, uh, they are really cool. Uh, they are really cool. So, you know, not for everybody, but again, once you get comfortable in them, uh, they are pretty, uh, you know, they are a pretty good uh, point of reference to kind of take your uh, trading from point A to point B. So again, if you are interested, there will be uh, kind of a link below or above somewhere, somewhere in here, there will be a link. So hopefully I'll see a lot of you guys uh, in the beginning of the year. So going into tomorrow, again, very, very, you know, very, very weird because again, the scoreboard is not going to highlight this. But again, uh, everything that got sold off today, I am looking for a day two, okay? Uh, anything that ran up today from channels that did absolutely nothing, uh, like the Amazons of the world, like the Facebooks of the world, like the Netflix of the world, I am looking for a day two because if those channels could confirm, you could get a really aggressive run uh, towards the end of the year. And again, ask any hedge fund manager, ask anybody who's raising cash, especially into the last quarter, like we talked about in the weekend video, they are looking to put their money to work in stocks that haven't gone or about to come out of channels that are our Wall Street darlings. So just keep that in mind tomorrow. And again, folks, like we've been saying for weeks and weeks and weeks, leave the stocks that had their big runs alone. They're the, always the first ones uh, that get punished, that get destroyed, that get you know, sent to the woodshed. And as we saw today, perfect prime examples of that playing out to fruition. So uh, let's talk about, uh, again, not going to take up a lot of time. Let's talk about uh, today's pivots. Again, this is the first time in a while we actually had uh, short pivots. Again, you do your research, you see what is not participating. Those are going to be the names that are going to be on the chopping blocks. And if they do fail, uh, those bottom channels, they will get hit first. So let's talk about it. Uh, 669 needs to build on Tesla. Uh, here was Tesla on the 669 area. Again, pretty basic stuff here. 669 was the high uh, from December 21st. And here was a pre-market right here. And once it took out uh, the 669 level traded right to supply of 676. Uh, but again, this was this wasn't where the value was, and we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, I know a lot of you guys uh, came in uh, short via puts on ZM, and again, we we talked about the you know 378 failed on Friday uh, for the bulls. First close in that channel. And I basically said, look, for those of you guys who are coming in, 366 becomes a huge area. If it builds below, can see 360, 356. And excuse me, it wasn't the 50 day, it was the 150 day. And ZM got murdered today. Again, along with everything else. So here was, you know, here was the 376, excuse me, 366 is the lows from November the 11th. It took that out, traded down to the 355s. And this is the first close below this rising support. So if ZM confirms more tomorrow, guys, look how much room you have all the way down to the 320, 305 area. So again, there's a lot more downside uh, to come if this thing uh, participates and confirms. Uh, snow, again, 319, if it builds below, can flush. I shorted some snow. Um, and I said, there's a shot to get down to 302, right? Here is, here is the channel here, 320. Uh, 321. So once it took out 319, again, 302 is measured potential, and that's exactly where it went. Big move there. Again, this thing confirms that 300. You have a lot more room to go uh, to the downside as well. Uh, Amazon, initially, I was looking for the short side. Obviously, not got, didn't get there. It confirmed back to the upside. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, PDD 157 needs to reclaim the build. Never got close to the 157. Uh, Airbnb, again, here's the theme, you know, stocks that had big runs, right? Even if it was initial IPOs, the point is they were taking down all the names uh, that had any type of success and they really started punishing them. Uh, Airbnb, 153, if it builds below, can flush. Here was Airbnb, right? Here was Airbnb. So here's the 140, uh, 153 traded right into the rising support of 148. And you can see one by one by one. But again, the names that went higher today are the names that hedge fund managers are going to allocate money if they didn't start uh, already doing so. Uh, Apple, 134.50, 135 needs to establish 
uh, the channel to base out in the daily and Apple went nuts. You know, Apple is continuing its run. Uh, we also saw really, really aggressive uh, 137, 138 weekly call buyers, even the 145s for January. And ultimately, uh, this area here of 138 is going to be macro. Uh, if this thing starts building 138, then this is where uh, the buyers, the aggressive call buyers, were getting their reference point. 145, uh, 147 is this top of uh, the linear regression line supply. So again, Apple continues to be uh, incredibly strong. Beyond got destroyed. Uh, to, to say it could flush uh, was definitely the understatement of the day. Uh, beyond 134.50, 134, if it builds below, can flush. Beyond got murdered. Okay, I, I think that's the best way of saying it. So this whole channel here was 134.50, 130, uh, 134. It just got murdered. Went all the way down to 126. You can see them over and over and over again. Uh, beyond uh, INSG never got to uh, 18. Uh, nice flush on BYND. Uh, Apple, again, as always, take on the way up. Here's a little one that actually did pretty pretty well. Uh, FUV 16 needs to build. Again, here was uh, FUV, and it obviously got sold off like everything else, but it took out 16, uh, traded to like 1670s, and again, uh, it got sold with everything else. Uh, BZUN, I still like 3140 if it builds below can flush. It traded up to the low, it closed at the lows of the day, but I still think it goes lower, right? So 30, it took out 3140, it traded traded down to 3090. I think if this thing starts building uh, below that 3090, 3070 level for tomorrow, it's gonna see lower prices. And again, here's my whole point on snow. Next support is 302, da 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 da. And snow closed right at 302. So again, I think there's more downside there as well. So here is the big one macro. We started seeing incredibly, incredibly aggressive. And this is what we talked about. And I said, look, any close over 3250. Did I, did I think for a second it was going to trade the 3300 today? I did not. Okay, I'll be the first person to admit it. But when the stock was like 3230s, 3220s, I said, look, any close today uh, over 3250 is huge. It's very, very big. So not only did it take out 3250, it took out 3300. And we started seeing nonstop, literally one after another with, with really big size for the 3300 call buyers. And again, look where at Amazon is on, you know, look where Amazon is right now in, in the whole spectrum of the channel, right? This is the highest close in this whole formation. Now, again, all these beta names had every opportunity to participate in this rally for the last three months. They haven't, right? They had one or two big runs and they kind of faded away. Let's hope Amazon finally continues tomorrow. Let's finally hope that Netflix confirms today's channel. Let's actually hope that Facebook wasn't a one-day wonder, that it actually can confirm the 10-day moving average. But for now, again, you have to like these things. And again, look at Amazon. First close over 3,300. You have all the way room to 3440, even 3500. Again, let's keep an eye on the options market tomorrow to get an idea of how much more aggressive bets and how near term they're willing to go out. So, guys, have a great night, everybody. Again, only a few days left in the year, folks. Again, it's incredibly important to realize that, again, we're not smarter than the market. The market will always make sure that you understand who is the boss. And if you don't trade carefully, and if you don't, if you keep on trading with caution to the wind, you're unfortunately you owe going to be a statistic. So please trade with caution, common sense, and use, you know, use your intelligence that God uh, bless you with. Guys, have a great night. God bless, and I'll see you all tomorrow.